Today's topic is study of the nervous system. So neuroanatomy is the study of the structural aspects of the nervous system. Nervous system is divided into central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. This is the central nervous system. This is consisting of the brain and the spinal cord. And brain consists of cerebrum, this midbrain, pond, and medulla. And these three midbrain, pond, and medulla constitute the brain stem and also the cerebellum. So this is brain, the cerebellum, cerebrum, and the brain stem, midbrain, pond, and medulla are present. And also the spinal cord, which extends from the lower aspect of the medulla oblongata to the L1 vertebra in the adult. And this is the peripheral nervous system consists of the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. The 12 pairs of the cranial nerves and the 31 pairs of the spinal nerves. So protection of the central nervous system is provided by these structures that is outermost uh, to the nervous system are the meninges, the spinal meninges in this case. This is the cut section of the spinal cord. So innermost is a pia matter, then it's a rachnoid matter, and then it's a dura matter. These are the meninges. And also his second uh, protection is a subarachnoid space containing the CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. And outer to that is a bony frame, which in this case of the spinal cord is a vertebral canal. So this is the um, case here in the spinal cord. And they are present gray and white matter. And uh, you could see this is the spinal cord in the center is uh, this edge shaped uh, tissue which is the gray matter and this is the white matter this is gray matter consisting of the nerve cell bodies and the white matter consists of the nerve fibers so that is the autonomic nervous system it is concerned with the innovation of the involuntary structures such as the heart smooth muscle and glands within the body it has two parts, sympathetic and parasympathetic. So sympathetic prepares body for an emergency. So parasympathetic conserves and restores energy. So parts of the brain as developing from the brain vesicle are the prosencephalon, the mesencephalon, and robencephalon. These are the three parts, and this is the forebrain. And it develops into telencephalon and diencephalon. Telencephalon develops into cerebral cortex and corpus striatum. And the diencephalon gives rise to thalamus and hypothalamus. And this is mesencephalon, from it develops a midbrain. And from the rhombencephalon or the hindbrain develops a pons, medulla, and the cerebellum. Then the we have to study what is the definition of a neuron. Neuron is a specialized cells that constitute the functional units of the nervous system. They are excitable and carry impulses rapidly from one part of the body to the other. So they are the special cells in the nervous system, the neurons. So the supporting tissue in the nervous system are the neuroglia. So neuron consists of a cell body and uh, exon and dendroids. These are the neurites, exons and the dendroids. You can see the structure. This is the cell body with the nucleus and the nucleolus. And these are the processes, branching tree-like process, the dendroids. And this is the exon. It's a long slender process, one single here. This is the exon. And at exon, at the end has the terminal bautons and uh, here the synapses are formed. Here you could see this. So synapse is a combination of a one um, nerve terminal with the other, with a synaptic cleft in between, where the neurotransmitter is released, which carries the impulse. So, and uh, this is the mechanism. So this is the dendrites. They receive the impulse. They are at the receiving end. And this is the axon. It carries the impulse away from this body of the neuron. 
So this is the axon hillock. This is a swelling at the, where is a, a start of the, this axon. And there are initial granules not shown here, which are present for the along side of the dendroids, which contain the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So the types of the neurons, this is pseudo unipolar. The pseudo unipolar, they have the only one pole, and uh, from that same pole arises the exon and the dendroids. This is exon, and this is dendroid. And that is a bipolar. So two poles from one arises uh, the dendroids, and the one from arises the exon. And this is the multipolar, the many poles. This is the multipoles arising, giving rise to the dendroids, and this from this part arises the exon. This is the multipolar. So peripheral nerve fibers are classified according to function. They can be efferent or afferent. Efferent are the motor fibers. They carry impulses from the central nervous system to the effector organs like the skeletal muscles. And the afferent fibers are the sensory fibers. They take impulses from the sensory effector organs to the central nervous system. So this is according to the area of innervation. They are further classified into somatic efferent, somatic efferent, visceral efferent, and the visceral efferent fibers. Somatic efferent take impulses from the joints, muscles, and bones to the central nervous system. The somatic efferent bring the impulses from the central nervous system to the muscles, for example. And the visceral efferent take the impulses from the viscera to the central nervous system, like heart, and this is a visceral efferent. They take the impulses from the central nervous system to the viscera. According to the diameter and velocity of the conduction, they are divided into A, B, and C type, which are the unmyelinated. So that is the presence of the myelin sheath. It could be myelinated fibers and the unmyelinated. Myelin sheath functions. It increases the velocity of the conduction. It reduces the energy expanded in the process of conduction. It is responsible for the color of the white matter of the brain and spinal cord. So the neuroglia, the various types, there in this picture you could see, they are like ependyma, like they line the ventricles. They are the ependyma. Then the microglia, the smallest cell, cells, and they are responsible for phagocytosis. Then the astrocytes, they provide nourishment and they also form the uh, blood brain barrier with the capillaries. And then this is the uh, responsibility of the Schwann cells and the oligodendrocytes for the formation of the myelin sheath. So this, in the peripheral nervous system, Schwann cells form the myelin sheath. And in the central nervous system, oligodendrocytes form the myelin sheath. So, synapse. The synapse transmits an impulse only in one direction. The two elements taking part in the synapse can therefore be spoken of as a presynaptic and postsynaptic. So, uh, the neurotransmitter is a chemical which is released into the synaptic cleft. Synapse is a basically union of one excitable cell neuron to the other, another which contains the space, it's a synaptic cleft where the neurotransmitter is released, which is the responsible for generation of the action potential, which can be excitatory or inhibitory. So these are the list of the important neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, dopamine, histamine, shortening, gamma, amino, butyric acid, GABA, glutamate, glycine, and aspartate. So the major region of the peripheral nervous system, the cranial nerves, the 12 pairs, which leave the brain and pass through foramina in the skull. And the spinal nerves, are 31 pairs, and they are associated ganglia, which leave the spinal cord and pass through intervertebral foramina in the vertebral column. They are 8 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral, and 1 coccygeal. There are seven cervical vertebra, but eight cervical nerves. 
there are four coccygeal vertebra but only one coccygeal nerve so this uh, picture you see this is brain and this is spinal cord these two form the central nervous system and here uh, is so shown the uh, the part of the peripheral nervous system this contains the cervical segments this is c8 and this is thoracic segment t1 to t12 spinal segments and the lumbosacral part which is the five lumbar sacral and one coccygeal that you could see the list eight cervical 12 thoracic five lumbar five sacral one coccygeal and this is the end of the spinal cord here which we'll study later on so ganglion definition the definition of a ganglion is a collection of the nerve cells collection of the nerve cells with the surrounding neuroglia outside the central nervous system this is called a ganglion the various types like this uh, dorsal root the posterior root ganglion associated with the spinal nerve and uh, cranial nerve and the autonomic ganglia which are the two types sympathetic ganglia and the parasympathetic ganglia so this is the progress and uh, with this i stop this uh, video and uh, thank you very much for listening to that